to my channel Physics for Students. My name is Shaunak and today we won't be speaking about any mathematics or equations or differential geometry or topology but we would be speaking about a book. Yes, this is the book. Stephen Hawking's My Brief History. Now you can see this is, uh, this is a hard copy book uh, which I have purchased it, right? Uh, if I open the book, uh, first of all, what you would see is that this one, right, my brief history, written by Stephen Hawking, this, you can find out uh, the photograph of the young Stephen Hawking, and this is all this book is about. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to speak about this book to you. I'm going to tell you what are the chapters and what are the content that has been covered in this book and particularly what would be the overall idea, a kind of an analysis and summary. And finally, I would be telling you my honest recommendation about this book. So first, let us get started. Just to start with, with this book, first of all, what I would like to tell you is it, this is around 126 pages, this entire book, and it has been divided around about in 13 chapters. As you can see, these are the chapters of the book. Now, uh, it, it, this is published around 2013 and the entire essence of the book is the journey of Stephen Hawking uh, into theoretical physics right from his childhood uh, till a certain, a certain time. So first of all, if I start with this book, then uh, what I would like to tell is that in the first chapter, he speaks about his childhood in this book. He speaks about his childhood, his lineage, more or less about his grandfather, about his mother, about his father. I mean to say an overall, uh, you know, a family pedigree where from his father belongs to about a little bit about his background, about his mother. And as always Stephen Hawking uh, used to say that he was born 300 years after the uh, death of Galileo. So uh, that is uh, one of the remarkable part which he has mentioned that I was born 300 years after the death of Galileo. Most importantly, if you talk of the child who talks a lot about his early memories, and I won't say what those memories are about, they are fascinating tales. Uh, it tells about his, uh, you know, sojourn in the Victorian house, big long house, old childhood memories. I hope you understand what I'm trying to tell. So the, the, uh, the early part of his childhood is covered much in details. We as reader come to know much more about Stephen Hawking's family, the house he used to live, uh, the early childhood memories, and most importantly, he lived during the time of Second World War, right? So there are certain, you know, memories about the war, how the war uh, struck uh, London. Uh, I, I won't say, you need to read through that. And there's a very important and uh, wonderful experience of his father bringing a toy train right during that time and the excitement that professor hawking uh, used to have while he was exploring that toy train uh, it is wonderful i mean to say the childhood portion really takes us back to those days in london in that victorian house long villa and when stephen hawking was uh, uh, stephen hawking was born so th this part of the uh, this part of the uh, chapter would con consist of childhood and it is immensely fascinating. It is immensely nostalgic. After that, uh, what Professor Hawking talks about is his school days in St. Saint, Saint Albans, right? Uh, if you come across that book, you will see that he has told that his father was not doing well and the struggle that they had during that time, right? And most importantly, that he went to the high school for girls. Okay, now why Professor Hawking went to uh, high school for girls. I'm not going to tell. You are going to read through it. He also tells about his, uh, you know, he went to Westminster School. He tried for scholarship, but somehow uh, due to his illness, he cannot do that. And he met the friends during that time. And most important, his first, I won't say first, but his influential mathematics teacher, Dikran Tahata. I have gone through many of the memoirs and I would say, uh, you know, stories and uh, articles of Professor Hawking. And I have seen that many times he have recollected about Dikran Tahata, an Armenian mathematician, uh, Armenian school teacher, and how after he earned the celebrity of being a Stephen Hawking, he still remembered 
professor, uh, the mathematics, mathematics teacher, Dikran Tahata. So the childhood and the school days are covered in a very lucid manner. And I'm telling you that if you start reading the book, you will get transported to those days and you will start seeing those events and phenomena in a nice and a natural He later explains about his Oxford days, uh, how he earned this scholarship, and most importantly, uh, there are a lot of pictures which uh, contains in this book. Let me just uh, show you in a glimpse uh, uh, those days when he was in the boating club and there are a lot of, you know, black and white pictures about his boating uh, going around in Oxford and uh, th this is really fascinating. I would just like to show you. It contains a little, uh, you know, photographs like this, which you can see. A lot of black and white and nostalgic photographs. Uh, I, I think these are uh, really very rare and you can uh, go through that. This would be the photograph of uh, his days in Oxford and a lot many others are there as you can see here that he is rowing the, uh, uh, the boat and a lot of adventures etc told during those uh, Oxford days. Next in his book what he tells is about his days in Cambridge which he went around 1962. And most importantly, this is the time when he tells that cosmology and gravitation was quite ignored. I mean to say, the time when he speaks about his Cambridge days, uh, it, it was not very clear that uh, cosmology and gravitation really creates a lot of importance. So now he talks about his association with great physicists like Fred Hoyle, Jayant Nerlikar, and Dennis Kiyama. And if you go through this book, what you will also find is that there were two schools of thought uh, which was introduced during that time uh, about general theory of relativity. I'm not going to say you what those schools of thought are, but anyone who is, as uh, uh, those who are listening to this, watching this video, anyone who is a lover uh, passionately in general theory of relativity or theoretical physics must read this chapter, which is called the Cambridge, because here we really come to know about the two areas of thought of general theory of relativity. Now here he talks about a fascinating, uh, you know, I would say a fascinating uh, experience when Dennis Kiyama introduced to him what is called a Wheeler Feynman electrodynamics. Now I am reviewing a book today, so I won't be speak about what is a Wheeler Feynman electrodynamics, but most importantly, I would just like to say that the solutions of the electrodynamic field equation must be invariant under time reversal. So if you get a solution of electrodynamic field, it should not change, it should be invariant under time reversal. So this is what is called uh, Wheeler Feynman electrodynamics, and this is in, during this time in this book. Uh, 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 Dennis Kiyama introduced Professor Hawking to do more of astrophysics and to this what is called Wheeler Feynman electrodynamics. The reason he states that he was not good in mathematics during his St. Alban's day. Now this came to me as a shock. How can Professor Hawking say that he is not good in mathematics? You have to go through the book to really understand what he meant by I am not good in mathematics and uh, uh, Skiyama uh, suggested to me to do more on astrophysics. So then he speaks about his illness, uh, falling down from the stairs and most importantly a wonderful romantic, uh, uh, I would say, association with Jane Wilde, his research and fellowship and his marriage and his birth of his son and daughter Robert and Lucy. So this actually comprises of what I would call his Oxford and Cambridge days. I really, uh, uh, I would really suggest you that you go through this book because you will be again the way Professor Hawking has written. The way you get transported to those days, you start, uh, you know, walking on the green grass of Cambridge. You start associating yourself with the those. next few chapters which is called the big bang he is, talks about uh, uh, roger penrose's approach to einstein field equations uh, the two famous uh, russian physicists and the model of Lik lifshitz and Khalaktinov, and uh, what he wrote uh, which is considered to be one of the most <laughs> difficult book to read that is called the large scale structure of space time he goes further to give a brief idea about black holes, what black holes are, and the marriage of general theory of relativity with quantum mechanics, 
and the idea of Hawking radiation, how it uh, uh, instigated, how that idea actually gave birth after the birth of their son, uh, of their, uh, you know, of Lucy, right, of their daughter Lucy. Now further in this book, what he does is that he goes forward and discovers the California Institute of Technology. And in this book, there's a chapter called Caltech. We know all what Caltech is. And he, uh, he again goes a little bit nostalgic in exploring his house at Pasadena uh, in Caltech and his views on disability. Uh, most importantly, he, during this time, he meets Pope Paul VI. And most importantly, he met Paul Dirac, Murray Gelman, and Richard Feynman. Richard Feynman and Murray Gelman are considered to be the great stars of Caltech Institute. And there is a wonderful rivalry story, which I'm not going to tell you. Uh, it is very interesting. You read it through this chapter, which is called Caltech, the rivalry between Murray Gelman and Richard Feynman. And it is being posed in a very nice, humorous manner. During this time, Professor Hawking tells that he got in association with Don Page, with whom he started working on the emission of black holes, which we now know as Hawking radiation. Further, he goes into the uh, further chapters of marriage, where he tells about the birth of his child, Tim, uh, and most importantly, how his relation with Jane Hawking started to get into strain, uh, how Jane Hawking got in association with Jonathan Jones, whom he, she later married, the divorce, the marriage with uh, Professor Hawking's nurse, uh, Elaine, and his pneumonia, and slowly how his speech went off. So uh, this is a kind of a time when we get more close to Professor Hawking's, I would say, personal life, and I can tell you that if you read more of this book, you really come to know what was the conflict between Jane Hawking. Although my professor, Professor Daksh, tells that still uh, before the death of uh, Professor Hawking, Jane Hawking remained closed associated with Professor Stephen Hawking. But anyhow, it is great for us to know more about the personal life of Professor Hawking, the, uh, the strains, the problems, and how they eventually got divorced and he married Elaine. So this is a nice chapter which gets really sentimental and you can find a little bit more about Stephen Hawking's personal then life. Then comes the most interesting part of this book which is called A Brief History of Time. Now this book we all know has been uh, stand out as one of the greatest book ever published. For 273 weeks it was the best seller in New York and uh, so this brief history of time, this chapter, Professor Hawking tells more about his ideas and most importantly, why he wanted to write uh, the, pub uh, the publishing house, Bantam's interest, lot of internal conflicts which happened, and what was the motivation? I mean to say, what was Professor Hawking's motivation in order to write the book, uh, My Brief History of Time? Note, I won't tell, but it is very interesting that in this book, Professor Hawking really tells that the book was not mentioned a brief history of time. There was a change in the name. Watch out, read through this chapter. The name of the chapter is Brief History of Crime. And you will really understand that what were the internal issues and why there was a change in the name, who suggested it, and most importantly, why this book uh, got so popular. Finally, uh, in the in the chapters which is called time travel, well, Professor Hawking gets a little bit more technical. He talks about Cauchy Horizon and Godel's rotating universe because he's talking about a possible time travel. And here I would like to quote uh, one line from uh, this book, uh, um, which 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 he talks interestingly, and it's a, uh, he tells it here that. So if a beautiful alien in a flying saucer invites you into her time machine, step with care. You might fall into one of these trapped repeating histories of only finite duration. So this is something very interesting which I found, which he actually uh, revealed in the time tra travel. It, I won't say he used really equation because there is absolutely no equation in this book. Uh, then he goes forward to explain what is an imaginary time. Now, imaginary time is something which 
Professor Hawking introduced because uh, I won't go into much details, again it will become technical, because he was exploring quantum gravity and he was using Richard Feynman's sum up history. So during that, using the sum up history methodology and working with quantum gravity, it was not possible in order to make the coordinates in a positive integer. So used something which is called an imaginary time. I won't go much details, you can read it later. What is imaginary time? But imaginary time is something which was necessary for Professor Hawking during that time so that he can calculate quantum gravity. Lastly, he concludes the book by telling uh, the chapter No Boundaries. Uh, he talks more about his own travels. Beautiful uh, photographs are there in this book. His experience in going to different parts of the world uh, his lamentation that he had not won a Nobel Prize, and his entire zest for life, which I think is the most important part, because being disabled from head to toe, how this wonderful person, uh, Stephen Hawking, carried on his research into black holes, theoretical physics, and astrophysics. So he really speaks, speaks of that zest of his life, and I would say it, it will be a matter of honor for all of us to read through the last chapter and really know for such a great motivated person. Of the, um, you know, uh, about, about this book, what I can tell you that the page qualities of this book is extremely good. You know, all these pages you can see, these are very hard, I would say. Uh, uh, they are almost like art papers. You can see the quality of the page is extremely good. This is nice hardbound book, right? This is absolutely nice and hardbound. And uh, uh, it contains around 134 pages with a lot of interesting uh, photographs during her, his college times and during his Cambridge days. If you talk of my recommendation of this book, I would say five out of five. Because even if you're not technically inclined, even if you're not a science student or a science aspirant, I would highly recommend to go for this book. The reason is that it takes you through a journey a journey which starts with a person's birth and it continues till his illness. A journey where we come to encounter a lot of important things. The entire shift in research, the entire shift in the research of general theory of relativity, of, uh, Stephen Hawking's marriage, birth of uh, his children, a lot of torrid times, problems encountered, and then how he slowly emerged into the final solution, which is called the quantum gravity, and most importantly, the Hawking radiation. So for me, to be very honest, this is the book which I will hold close to my heart, and uh, this, is, this is something you really need to go through it. Uh, it is five out of five. It is a wonderful book to go through. Great journeys, great adventures, and uh, wonderful uh, science to learn through in, from the eyes of one of our greatest theoretical physicists, Stephen Hawking. That's all from uh, my end. I won't be, you know, I won't, uh, I won't take much time to elaborate on. This is my first, uh, uh, I would say, review on a book, which is of Stephen Hawking. I would be coming up with more reviews in this series, and you can watch out my channel. Uh, do go through this book and do let me know how did you like it in the comment box. You can purchase the Kindle version of this book, which is in Amazon. Otherwise, you can go through Flipkart or any other online portals to get through this book. I would be really anxious and I would really like to know more about this book. If you can kindly put up your comments in the comment section of this video, do like, subscribe and click on the notification button all so that you can get all the notification from Physics for Students. This is Seanak signing off from today. I will be back again with more interesting reviews on certain other books. Stay safe, stay happy, and take care. Bye.